So I think everyone at a certain age finds something that's their go-to for comfort. Some people have comfort food. Some people have like a movie or a TV show that they like to rewatch. I have the Souls games. And for me, it all started with this game about five years ago. But it's been far too long since I've played it. And it's time to go back through with fresh eyes, try to learn some new things maybe, and just have a chill, good time hanging out in Dark Souls 3. So, welcome to Kairos Plays. I think what I'll do is give some quick thoughts on each area as I get to it, just based on my memories and my experiences. And then I'm going to rate them on an intimidation scale from 1 to 10. 1 being, it's a complete pushover, I have no fear. And 10 being, I'm filled with dread, and I know I'm going to die a lot. And I'm also going to tell you the official name for each enemy type as I get to them the first time. Uh, just because I think that's interesting information, and maybe you will too. And this is the Cemetery of Ash. For a tutorial area, I'm going to say this one's the toughest. I like this. I like this area because it's short, it's compact. You can run straight to the boss in a minute if you want to. But the two main enemies here, uh, I have very little confidence, even right now as... I guess a veteran of the game, but you know, removed from it for a while, that I'll get through this area without either the mini boss or the main boss killing me at least once. We'll see. These guys are called Grave Wardens. And uh, I'll just. Okay. I'll just take a uh, broken knife to the face to start it off. Probably not a good sign for the playthrough, but saved it with a parry there. Alright, we learn very early on. Just in case you've never played a video game before, they show you. Always go the wrong way. You will probably be rewarded. So yeah, I'm giving the Cemetery of Ash an 8 on the Intimidation scale based on my first playthrough. I think I tried like every class in this area and died a lot. But even now, I would give it a solid six. Uh, as you can see, uh, I've started out with the Pyromancer class and I chose the Fire Gem for my gift. And right here, the entire tone of this game is set. These are the type of things that I did not appreciate, of course, on my first playthrough, since this was my first game. And I actually want to focus on these types of things in this playthrough, because I never really have. But right off the bat, we have Oscar of Astora from Dark Souls 1, leaning against the Lord Vessel. So you're just immediately thrown into this uh, fact that all these worlds are converging and you're going to get a lot of callbacks to the previous games which I know some people criticize it's just uh, reused assets or fan service or whatever but I, I think it's a really really cool starting concept uh, I think of it kind of like the movie Inception uh, where there's that scene where they're in the dream and it starts to fall apart and the city kind of like folds back on itself that's what I see like the entire universe of the souls series doing in this game is all kind of coming together both in like time but also people and geology and all of it uh, geography it's all just kind of piling on top of each other and so from the beginning of the game, right here, all the way through to the end where you, you know, spoiler alert, <laughs> final boss being this amalgamation 
of uh, what I see is like all of the players who have either kindled the fire or um, were ushered in the Age of Dark in Dark Souls 1 or beat Dark Souls 2, you know, it's like, or Demon Souls. It's, it's the, the Lord of Cinder to me is the amalgamation of all the players who have played these games to completion, along with Lord Gwyn. That's just my view. I'm not a lore guy by any means. And so I'm sure that uh, a lot of people would have arguments against that view, but that's just how I see it. And I think it's pretty cool. These guys are called ravenous crystal lizards. And this was my very first welcome to the souls games enemy. This guy kicked my ass so many times on my first playthrough. And he is uh, on track to do it again right now. Let's see if I can recover. Finish him. Excellent. That makes me feel good. You can actually take this guy, uh, you can kite him all the way out here to the cliff edge, bait one of his rolling attacks and make him fall off. But I wanted to face him in honorable combat. thing that I don't even think is arguable is this game has the best vistas and is the most fun to uh, try to pay attention to where you can go and look back on where you came from in the whole series to me. Okay, more Grave Wardens here. Now that I'm looking at these guys, kind of looks like the um, same armor as the Confessor set in Elden Ring. Which I guess is based on Oswald in uh, Dark Souls 1. I might have to look at a picture of all those, but in my head they all look very similar right now. And then by extension, I guess, Cromwell, the partner in Dark Souls 2. Might as well grab these firebombs, huh? Picked up 
several fading souls from them. I think they're only worth like 50 souls each, but hey. I'll take it. Oh man, I'm already digging this because I don't even feel like I've ever really paid attention to that tree. That is way cooler than I've ever given it credit for. Overall, this game still looks gorgeous to me. Alright, this guy is most reminiscent of... Uh, whoa, buddy, what's going on with your belt physics there? That's a little suspect. This guy is most reminiscent of Old King Dorian, I think. From Demon Souls. I feel like the armor set is definitely based on him. Still got it. Ooh, that was close. That was more than close. Okay. That's what you get for being cocky, boys and girls. Welcome to Dark Souls. Nice. All right. One of the few things I will edit out is any run backs to places where I've already ran through. So let's try that again. better. Much better. I think it's kind of nice to be humbled early. Probably good for me, honestly. Alright, that's a really fun fight. Still. Still. Dark Souls 3 has the best vistas, and in my opinion, of all the games, all the From Software games, the best boss fights. At least my favorite. Even the bad ones are still pretty good and pretty fun. It's the only game that I don't have any bosses that I can think of right offhand that I just like dread getting to. And obviously, that was Udax Gundir. I don't think I said his name. But it was at the bottom of the screen, so I don't think he counts as an enemy talk that I have to uh, tell you the official name of.
Gotta have my homeward bones. I'm a big fan of staying stocked up on those. I will use those with reckless abandon later, I'm sure. should probably do the smart thing and go rest here before I get even close to old Master Swordsman over there. Okay, Firelink Shrine. I really thought about Firelink Shrine much, but uh, just looking at it right now, even though it's clearly called Firelink Shrine, it reminds me a lot more of the Nexus. Since I've played this game, I've actually played Demon Souls for the first time, I've played Bloodborne for the first time, and I've played a lot of Dark Souls 1 and 2 in the couple of years since I've played this game, so I've got a lot more knowledge of the previous games than I did the last time I played through. But yeah, this is very reminiscent of the Nexus. Not quite as uh, big and grand, but a similar layout with the thrones and the arch stones. And she definitely is most similar to the Maiden in Black from Demon Souls and any other of the Fire Keepers for sure. So a lot of Demon Souls vibes going on in here that I'm only now appreciating. Okay, I think I'll go ahead and do the standard run up to the top of Firelink. And while I'm doing that, I'll tell you a couple more thoughts I had. Um, I was thinking this was the first From Software game that I played, but actually that would be the original Armored Core on PS1 when I was probably 10 years old. Okay, time for the real boss of Firelink Shrine. And I have failed. I'll take second attempt all day. So yeah, this is not my first From Software game, but it was my introduction to the Soulsborne franchise, so... It means a lot to me, and I'm stoked about playing through it again for real. And I'm committed to seeing this playthrough all the way through. I've had a bad habit of starting things up and then losing motivation, but I'm going to finish this one out no matter what it takes. Then I've been playing a little bit of Dark Souls 2 lately, and the Crystal Lizards in that game are something else. Okay, this is the sword master. And I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna take this opportunity to be cheesy. And it seems I've made a huge mistake. Okay. We'll continue. I might respect this guy's damage even more than Gundyr. And I'm terrified to get parried by him. Maybe I can be the one doing the parrying here. Let's find out.
Sweet. That feels pretty good. Between that guy and the ravenous crystal lizard and gun deer. Oh, that, that dude just did some kind of gnarly skate trick down these stairs. But yeah, between those three enemies, I probably had 30 deaths in my first playthrough. Minimum. Yeah, a couple more items over here. I think we got some more homeward bones. And then our last new enemy for this area, which is called a starved hound. I think that's it for Firelink Shrine, and I think I'll call this an intro. We'll start next time by talking a little bit about builds and my ideas for what I'm going to shoot for as far as stats and my arsenal. It's one of my favorite things in these games is theory crafting, all the gear you're going to be using. So I guess I'll go ahead and start now. Gotta have my torch. I love having a torch in my offhand in all the games. There's a few items she has that are worth buying and trading to the bird's nest up top. But I'll wait on that. I could go ahead and put that fire gem in my hand axe but I'm not sure if that's what I want to do so I'm gonna hold off for now okay back up top and as you can see I got a little careless the last time that I ran back up lost my ember kind of a bomber but no big deal Equip that silver serpent ring for extra soulage. And I think I'll call this the end. If you decide to go on this journey with me and you have any little tidbits of information that you think I might find interesting, throw it in a comment and we'll discuss it. And I try to keep all my videos what I call sleepy time approved. Basically just keep everything nice and chill so it's easy to listen to. Uh, if you have any advice on how I can do that better, let me know that too. Until next time.